Welcome to Think Alive. We're Sharon and Andy, just two people with a dream and a vision of restoring our traditional stone-built farmhouse in southern Spain, transforming it into a beautiful off-grid home and sharing our journey with you. Welcome back to the Finca everyone in our sunny southern Spain, not so sunny today but it doesn't need to affect our solar, it carries on regardless. Um, today um, I'm going to be making a simple solar battery charger, trickle charger, to keep a battery on our generator charged up. Of course this can be applied to a car, a motorcycle, whatever, anything that's left unattended for you know extended periods of time um, to stop the battery going flat. You could of course disconnect the battery but then in the case of a car you probably got all the problems of um, reprogramming your radio, resetting the clock which are like university graduate challenges. Um, plus if you've got an alarm on it um, that's not going to work either if you've disconnected the battery. So quite often the easy solution is to have a, a trickle charger plugged in. Um, the reason in the case of our generator um, it just doesn't start um, not because there's anything wrong with it, because the solar's too good and it's never the batteries have never reached the depletion level low enough to fire the generator up. Um, so I'm sure it will do and it's going to do over the winter for certain and I want to make sure that it starts by making sure that the battery's um, topped up. Normally on, a, on a, a, a normal generator the battery doesn't get depleted because it's not doing anything, it's just sat there as a battery. But in the case of an auto start generator like ours, which is over there, or it's outside over there, um, it sends a tiny current um, to the inverter um, constantly basically. And then when the batteries reach a predetermined level that you can set, it closes the switch inside the inverter which then sends the current back to the generator and tells it to start. Clever stuff. Um, so what are we going to do? I've got a little solar panel. Um, that's it basically um, and I'm gonna put it's supposed to be a 12 volt panel um, but in any case I'm gonna put a little charge controller on it um, just to keep the battery at its optimum level constantly it's um, yeah basically uh, always better to use a charge controller I think um, so let's get going um, I haven't actually bought these, well I have bought them, but in the past I used to fit a lot of solar systems on motorhomes and caravans and things, um, but this and other gadgets as well, um, but this is some, one, I've got one left from the old days and I've got this panel as well, it's actually brand new, um, so that's why I'm, I'm using those basically. Um, the cost of these, probably about 40 euros. Um, and a little bit of wire, 2.5 mil squared cable. I'm not sure what that is in gauge um, in the States, but it's reasonable thickness. I think probably what you don't use for domestic lines. Um, a couple of screws, we're going to make a couple of brackets, and then let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is um, cover up the solar panel. Just got a bit of card, um, I'm just going to cut round the panel. I've done one side already just with a, a Stanley knife, a Stanley blade, a sharp blade, like so. Alright, we'll do that again. There we go, I'm on the desk now. Right, so that's him. Um, because obviously as soon as the sunlight is, or as soon as the light doesn't even have to be sunny, it's going to start producing power. And as we're going to have to wire it up and things, um, we don't want it producing any power. So I'm just going to take a bit of tape now and just tape that to a couple of sides just to hold it in place. Um, I'm just using good old reliable duct tape or gaffer tape as it's known. It's not going to be on for too long hopefully because I want to get it done. Just simply stick him like that. And another one. Let's do one on the bottom I think. And that's him done no power being produced. Excellent. Right, so I'm going to mount my solar panel 
on the side here it gets us some most of the afternoon they don't even need super bright sunshine um, to do the job um, what I've got these holes on the back stick out just past either side of this so I'm going to put a piece of threaded rod into there with a nut on the back poking through past my panel put a plate across same on the other side put a plate across the back that I can just screw it down to um, so we'll go and see what we've got for that right so here's my threaded rod um, they only want to be 75 millimeters long which is about three inches so I'm just going to mark it I'll leave if I put it on the desk <laughs> Take the lid off my pen. 75 there. And I'm just cutting off, sticking with my new vise, which is working wonderfully at the moment. Chop him off with the angle grinder. One down, one to go. Whenever you cut threaded rod, which is wonderful stuff, you usually get um, a bit of a skaggy end if you can see them. Um, it makes it difficult to get the nut on, so I'm just going to round them off on the, the bench grinder. And uh, wear gloves because it will get hot fast. So there we go, a nicely rounded end, it's not going to cut your fingers and the nut goes on easily. Um, right, I'll get the other one prepared and then we can carry on. For across the back I'm going to use this, just an old piece of off cut of scrap plate. I'm just going to cut it to the length that I want and then drill two holes in it. Um, then my bolts will come through then, I'll put a nut on the back and that will hold him in place, so it should do. Again, because it's going on the back, um, it's not going to get walked past or anything, but I'm still going to round the corners off um, just so there's no sharp edges. Keep it all nice. Once again, on the bench grinder, engage safety glasses. I'm just offering it up to my panel, mark the holes. Just going to drill through them now. There we go, he's ready to go. Um, right, so next we need to do some wiring, obviously on into the panel, because it hasn't got any, um, and we won't be able to do it, because we've got to take the back off. It's marked pos and neg on the cover there, but I've just marked it on there for easier reference, and I would need to take the back off, pop a screwdriver in, and just give it a flip like that, and there we go. So this is our pos, this is our neg, um, I'm going to put some, I'm going to use little ring terminals on there and then keep the cable intact and then just crimp them round the outer cable and then of course we've got our waterproof connectors on the back. So next we need uh, some terminals and some wire. So I'm going to use these little blue ones. I've just taken the screw out of there just to make sure it'll fit through. It's the right size. Um, if you can see that. These little terminal boxes are fantastic. You can see that <laughs> there, you got millions in them. Um, I just keep topping them up, I just buy bags of the sizes when they're getting low and top them up. Um, I'm only having a short run of wire on it because you'll see where I'm going to put the charge controller in a minute. So I'm just going to cut off a bit more than I'm going to need. There we go. Um, where are the wire strippers? Another godsend automatic wire strippers. Just um, stick them in and blam, there it is. As easy as that. Put them on our terminal. Automatic crimpers. Select the colour. They're all they've got colour bits on the back, we can see that in that light. So because it's a blue terminal, we're going to use the blue. Um, what's it? 
which is the middle one. Oh, can't do it with one hand, I'm trying to film it. Right, there we go. And we just squeeze him up. Quite a tight one. And then they release automatically. And it's, it's crimped. Right, so he's in there. I'm just going to put a bit of blue tape on him. So I know, I remember that he's the positive. Because um, you don't want to get them mixed up. And then I'll get the other side done. Okay, tighten up the glands. And then um, pop the cover back on. Just should just snap back in place. Like that. There we go. Perfect. Right, he's ready to go. I don't know if that's too dark for you to see. Um, but I'm going to put the charge controller just up there and there's absolutely no chance of it getting whatever and it's just four little screws and um, it'll be done so we'll start off with one there we go I'm having to do it the old fashioned way because they've left me drilling in the house <laughs> right I'll get him fixed in Right, so the next thing you want to do is run the wires um, from the battery. Um, I'm just going to stick them into the charge controller now because there's nothing there. And then run them up the timber here, through that one there, round the back of there, drop them down a wall, and then just come in. There's a few vent holes in the bottom of the generator. I can um, bring them in there. So we'll get this done. Then I'm just going to put a bit of tape on. I've cut this roughly. I'll cut it down, but I'm going to put a bit of tape on... Um, the end of one I'm going to use something positive just so I can identify it in the future there we go and now I know he's a positive so I'm going to stick him in here straight away <laughs> ah, I've got the wrong screwdriver right I'll go and sort that out these go into the little battery symbol on the charge controller and they're marked positive and negative. Just shove them up. That's it, and tighten them up. Come on, get in. That's it. Just give them a good pull, make sure you've got them in properly. Now I'm going to run these along here pinning them up with um, clips as I go and I'm going to drill a hole through this one to take him out of the back out of the way there I've just hit me screw. <laughs> Shove them through there. pretty awkward to show in here um, but my wires are now through there next to my battery I've pulled the battery forward I'm just gonna put another ring terminal on the end and fix them one to the neg battery and one to the pos battery that hopefully then should bring the charge controller to life so there we go um, it's connected the batteries back in and as you can see it's alive just got to get the solar panel on it now Right, so my panel's going on there. I've put my bracket things through. Um, I've offered him up. I've just put a hole through where the cables are going to go. So we'll run them through. Hopefully they'll reach the charge controller. They don't look very long. <laughs> I'm sure they will. And then 
I just need to get my brackets for the back. So here we go. I brought my two nuts, but oops, I forgot the bracket. Um, yeah, they'll be reaching, I think, no problem. So we just get these on here, one through like that, put a nut on the back. Same with the other side. There is it, come on. Ugh. And then I can uh, adjust it to where I want it and tighten it up. I can now pop him into the respective again posit neg. I'll put the neg in first because the posit's got tape on. That's that one. Yep, he's in there. Ah, oh, fiddle it. There we go. I got the pods in now. There we go. It's awfully dark in here. I hope you can see that. Um, perhaps it'll come in a bit more. Maybe. Right now to un unveil the solar panel, take the, the cardboard off it and see what it does there we can see the load light has gone off and the sudden light has come on and um, it's charging fantastic uh, unfortunately this charge is very cheap and basic it doesn't tell you what the volts are um, but I shall periodically check it with the uh, voltmeter in fact I'm going to do that in a minute um, but it's, uh, it's working looking pretty good there pretty stylish um, so yeah happy days another good job well done so um, just to verify everything, I covered the panel back over um, the battery voltage that I checked it yesterday was 12.7 um, with the panel uncovered it's up to 12.86 and um, of course it might not have a voltage region on it but it's got a light and the light will change colour um, if your battery's not charged or undercharged so all I've got to do is come round, stick my head in, it's got a green light, we're good to go. Okay so after um, after installing it, I just had a look through the instruction manual. <laughs> um, apparently, when it's fully charged, the green LED will flash. Um, it'll flash basically, um, but if it gets low, it'll change colour. So as long as it's green or flashing green, I'm happy. Um, I'm so pleased I got that done. It's one of the things. It's another thing you don't have to remember to keep starting the generator because obviously the battery charges when the generator is running. Um, but it's one less thing I have to think about, I don't have to be concerned. All I've got to do is stick my head under, look at the light, and we know our backup generator is going to start. So that's it for this one. I um, hope you found it interesting, hope you took something from it. Maybe you can do something yourself with your car or your motorbike or your lawn mower or you know anything that's got a battery on it to keep it topped up without having to worry about it. Um, thanks so much for watching. Thank you so much to everyone that supported the channel, all those lovely people that bought us a beer, um, and we'll see you on Sunday.